of sticky floors, flat beer, and the lingering scent of puke from last St. Patty's Day? Great. Well, you're in the right place. We're visiting Sketchy's grimiest off-campus bar to watch the students make some massively bad decisions and amass a sea of regrets. Oh, and also to review mass spectrometry. As the name suggests, the primary goal of mass spec is to learn about the mass of a compound. It's often used to help uncover the identity of unknown compounds. But even if you know the identity of a sample, mass spec can be useful for gaining info on the isotopes in that sample or learning about how that compound fragments. Mass spectrometry is done inside a machine called a mass spectrometer. The quick and dirty version of what happens inside of one of these machines is that the compound in question is broken into a whole bunch of ions, which get accelerated into a detector so that their mass can be measured. But let's break this down in a bit more detail. The first thing that happens in a mass spectrometer is that a sample is vaporized and then shot with a beam of electrons. This breaks bonds in the compound, which causes cations of different sizes to form. You can remember this by the beam of light illuminating this guy's plus sign pattern shirt. Let's call him... Uh, Brad. Now, most molecules in the sample will have bonds broken such that they split into two smaller fragments. But because there's a bit of randomness to how the electron beam hits, some molecules only have a single electron knocked off. These become a cation of the entire molecule. So they're called the parent ion or molecular ion. The parent ion becomes really important later on. So just hold that tidbit in your brain for now. Okay. Once a sample is broken into a whole bunch of cations, voltage is used to accelerate the ions in a straight path through a vacuum. Sort of like that plus sign dart is accelerating straight out of that kid's hand. Though, uh, his aim leaves something to be desired. Not to worry, though. It looks like this server is on his team. Though, that save might have been more for self-defense rather than boosting Brad's score. But either way. The fact that that magnet pattern dart tray deflected the positive dart towards the target should help you remember that cations in a mass spectrometer are accelerated through a magnetic field. Then, the force of the magnetic field deflects the charge ions towards a detector that measures their mass-to-charge ratio. We'll explain mass-to-charge ratio later, but for now, just know that the detector is where the cations get measured. It's their final stop. Now, the really important thing about this process is that how much cations are deflected by the magnetic field is determined by their mass. So the smallest, lightest ions get deflected more. You know, just like it's easier to deflect a ping pong ball than a bowling ball. And when the magnetic field is weak, these little ions will be the ones to make it to the detector. The larger ions will not deflect enough to reach it. If you think of the dartboard as the detector, you should be able to remember the gist of this. See, Brad's little darts, representing small, light cations, reach the dartboard thanks to being deflected by that small magnet pattern tray, which represents a weaker magnetic field. But his larger darts didn't have enough arc, so they landed too high. And those are going to be a real pain to pry out of the drywall. Now for the competition. We have Brad's arch rival, Carrie. Unfortunately, she's six Long Islands deep, so her aim doesn't seem to be any better than Brad's. But the fact that she's getting help from a large magnet pattern tray symbolizes the next step of mass spec. Once the smallest ions are deflected to the detector, the strength of the magnetic field is gradually increased. This increases the amount of deflection the cations experience, which lets heavier and heavier ions be deflected towards the detector. Now the smaller cations will be deflected too much, so they won't reach the detector. That's why when the bigger magnet tray deflects the darts, the large ones hit the bullseye while the smaller, lighter ones land down below. Eventually, as the magnetic field keeps increasing, the largest ion in the sample, the parent ion, should reach the detector. And that means all of the cations of all sizes will have had a chance to be measured. And that's pretty much it for how mass spec works. But let's quickly run through how to interpret a mass spectrometer's output, a mass spectrum. We already mentioned that the detector measures mass to charge ratio. This is abbreviated M over Z, which we've symbolized with this old scorecard with massy score over Zanes. M over Z ratio is exactly what you'd expect. It's the ratio of an ion's charge to its mass. Luckily, in most mass spec problems you'll encounter, the cations will have a charge of plus one. That's why Zane only scored one lowly point. And a charge of 1 means the mz ratio will be mass over 1, which is just the ion's mass. Usually, mass to charge ratio is the x-axis of a mass spectrum, though sometimes mass alone is used. 
Either way, this generally means that the data is laid out such that the lighter cations are on the left and the heavier cations are on the right, so long as they all had the same charge. Then the y-axis measures relative intensity on a scale from 0 to 100. This tells you the relative amount of each cation that was picked up by the detector. To help you remember this, the columns of this dart rack contain different quantities of each size dart. So overall, a mass spectrum tells you the mass of the fragments a compound ionizes into and gives you a sense of how many ions of each mass were present. One thing this data can be useful for is identifying functional groups that might be present in an unknown compound. So we've included our symbols for a few common functional groups in this scene. A ketone key, a carboxylic acid cardboard box, and of course, a Coase light for alcohol groups. Of course, these are just examples of some functional groups. So do keep in mind that mass spec can pick up just about any functional group. All right, let's run through a quick example of how mass spec can be used to identify functional groups. Phenyl cations, C6H5, have a mass of 77. If a mass spectrum has a high intensity at 77, that's a hint that the compound could have many phenyl groups. Or it might contain one phenyl group that's particularly likely to ionize. Of course, the peak could also result from another group with a mass of 77. So this data is more of a clue than a definitive answer. Finally, the last thing to look for on a spectrum is the parent ion. Remember, that's the version of the entire molecule being analyzed that had one teeny tiny electron knocked off. Since this should be the largest ion detected, the parent ion is the heaviest, farthest right major peak. That's why this parent is taking the largest rightmost dart from the shelf. And okay, you may see a few teeny lines to the right of the parent ion, but these are usually just isotopes of the parent ion that have a few extra neutrons, and therefore are just a smidge heavier. Anyways, the mz ratio of the parent ion tells you the mass of the entire compound, which is often the only piece of information you're looking to glean from mass spec in the first place. All right, well, when a dad in cargo shorts shows up, it can only mean one thing. He got his butt kicked in golf this morning, and he's looking to win back his fragile, fragile pride. So let's dart through a quick recap before he embarrasses Brad and Carrie. Mass spectrometry is a tool used to gain information about a compound structure and mass. It works by breaking compounds into different sized cations. Then these cations pass through a magnetic field, which deflects them into a detector that measures their mass to charge ratio. It takes a stronger magnetic field to deflect heavier ions. The x-axis of a mass spectra shows the mass to charge ratio of the deflected cations. When cations have a charge of plus one, this is equal to their mass. The y-axis measures relative intensity, which tells you the relative quantity of cations of each mass. A mass spectrum can be used to gain information about the functional groups in a compound, and the parent ion can be used to find the compound's overall mass. All right, well, I think Brad and Carrie are long overdue to put away the sharp objects, vomit in the back of a cab, fall asleep on the couch holding a slice of pizza, and wake up with a massive headache. So that's a wrap on mass spec.